everyone, how are you going? My name's Joey Carbstrong. I'm a vegan YouTuber, animal liberation activist. I'm also an ex-gang member and an ex-drug user, and I've changed my life, um, and now I contribute back by helping animals and helping people. So I'm gonna tell you, talk to you about how to spread the message. I've had a bit of experience in doing it the wrong way for me, and now I've found that the way that's working best for me. So you always have to know why you're being active to, well, when you start off. You need to know why you're doing something. Um, if I was doing this for any other reason, I would have stopped ages ago because it was just would have been too much for me. So I know why I'm doing it. I'm doing it to help animals is my main prerogative. That is why I'm an activist. And when I, I give myself some perspective on what they're going through, it makes the, the struggles I go through a lot easier. So know why you're, you're being active. What is it about? What do you want to do? You want to help people with their health. You want to help animals. You, you want to fight for the plight of the environment. These are the things you need to uh, galvanize in you before you even start. Okay. The second biggest thing is being educated. Okay. You need to know the answers to the questions that come up. Okay. And there are answers to all of these questions. You don't have to worry. Uh, we have the truth on our side. So educate yourself before you go out there and advocate because someone will stump you with a question you'll be like oh like something about the environment or about uh, protein or about iron or about humane slaughter you need to know the answers to these questions and you don't need to be Gary Yorofsky educated you just need to be more educated than your average non-vegan that is key okay so have a base level of education about veganism before you start advocating and that is probably the second most important thing one thing I've learned through my journey is I come fresh out of gangs. I was quite in a uh, condition to violence. I was quite an aggressive person. I was trying to change aspects of my personality that didn't serve me anymore. And one of those things is aggression. Main things is aggression. I don't think angry activism is, a, that effect, is as effective as positive activism, positive, calm, rational um, advocacy. I don't tell people not to, not to do angry ac activism, but I, I would say that anger can be a helpful tool. Okay, so anger can get you off your butt to go do something. But aggression is anger in action. Okay, so you've got to make sure if you feel the anger, you don't act on that anger. You feel the anger, you let it pass, and you respond calmly and logically. Anger is just an emotion. It's okay to feel natural emotions. But it's when you act them out that becomes detrimental to your activism. It's also a lot less sustainable if you're always fighting everyone all the time. Okay, it's very stressful. It takes a lot of energy out of you. You got to think this is a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, you've got to be advocating for a long time. These industries are going to be around for a long time. So you've got to be uh, the most sustainable activist you can be. Um, and I've found talking to people like they're my friend, you know, instead of us against them. You know, you've got to remember that, hey, haven't always been vegan. Because when you first go vegan, you just think you've been vegan your whole life. And I got lost in that sort of illusion myself so you got to remember hey I wasn't always vegan and you talk to people like they're your friend and they're more they're more likely to take on the message that way okay because people can sense your body language they can feel your energy all right it's very important the most effective forms of activism there isn't one effective form of activism the most effective form of activism is the one that resonates best with you okay because there's many different ways to do this that's why when uh, vegans get all scared when I say hey you got to be active and they think they have to stand on the side of the road and stop a slaughterhouse truck and scream meat is murder at them. But that's not what I'm talking about. That is a form of activism, yeah, don't get me wrong, but it's not the only thing you have to do to be active. You can do it in many different ways. You can be a hairdresser, you can have someone sitting there for an hour while you're doing their hair, and they can't go anywhere in that hour. You've got them there, okay? You can spread the message, you can be an organiser for events. I've got someone who looks after my emails, uh, does all my calendar schedules, does all that stuff. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so you could be really good at that. And that's how you can contribute to these activist groups. You can do um, food vlogs, lifestyle vlogs. You can be very positive and just talk about what you're eating. And these things all work spread, spreading the message. People take on the message in different ways. Everyone's different. So to say that one form of activism is somehow superior to another is false. They all work together, okay? Someone might come across an angry activist and they might be like, oh, vegans. And then they come across like a James Aspie and they'd be like, oh, he's much better, he's much nicer, but he has the same message, okay? We all have the same message and we do it in different ways. So there's no one form of activism, so don't be afraid. One of the most powerful methods I've found in my advocacy is making videos. Now, it's just an effective use of your time, okay? Now, for me to advocate to 
500 people on the street one on one would take me three weeks and I'd be pulling my hair out and I'd be so stressed and using all my energy. But for me to make one video that could reach 10,000 people in one second, like literally, boom, it goes across the internet. Sometimes it get, goes viral straight away. Like I've got nearly a million views on a discussion I had with a farmer. How are you gonna get a million people to have a discussion with a farmer? You know, you can with the internet. That's the power of making videos. You can do response videos. Respond to people's, um, you know, they're, say they're, they're spreading some propaganda about meat and dairy, saying it's healthy for you, when it's, the science is on our side. You can do a response to that, a calm, logical, science-based uh, response. These things reach a lot of people, especially if, you, if you're speaking about celebrities. If you have a celebrity in a title, people are drawn to watch that. There are effective ways to make videos. Facebook videos should be shorter. Uh, they, play, they play when people are uh, sc scrolling through their newsfeed. So they just start playing automatically. They should have subtitles so people, because they don't have sound automatically. They should have subtitles and be really short and powerful. YouTube videos are a bit different. They can be longer. Longer videos on YouTube are more likely to show up in their recommended list, okay? You can have any editing software, any camera, any computer. It doesn't matter. Start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. Some people wait for two years before they start a channel because they want the perfect camera, the perfect computer, the perfect editing software and it never gets done. That's not how you do it. You get your phone out and you start making videos if that's what you want to do. If that's the type of activism you feel drawn to. Without social media, this movement wouldn't be moving anywhere. This, there wouldn't be a movement without social media. Unless something happened on television, which is not going to happen because they've got vested interest in industry. All the advertisement are for meat, dairy and eggs. There's millions and millions and billions of dollars in, invested in these. So nothing's going to happen on TV. We've got our own form of media and that's why the movement is growing exponentially. Without it, it would be nothing. I promise you that. So this is our main weapon we have to fight this war. And it is a war. Okay? It's a war waged against animals. So social media, without Gary Yarovsky's speech, Gary Yarovsky is a famous animal liberation activist. And the reason he's famous is because social media. He went and did 2,000 speeches in a, in, a, in a space of 20 years to about 50,000 students, all right? That would have taken so much energy from him. Someone was at his Georgia Tech speech and filmed it from the crowd. It wasn't even him. And they uploaded it to YouTube and it went viral. And some activists in Israel made it go viral over there. And all of a sudden he was all over the TV, all over, the, everyone knew who he was. Everyone knows who, he's like, he's like the, one of the most famous celebrities in Israel, okay? Now, without YouTube, it wouldn't have got out there. It wouldn't have got out there. So um, a very powerful form of your, uh, using your time as an activist, making videos. It's not for everyone though. You don't, have to, you don't have to make videos. It's just one form of activism that I've found to be very, very powerful. One, uh, another form of activism is uh, anonymous for the voiceless type activism. You don't have to join anonymous for the voiceless to do that activism, but I recommend you do. I love their structure, the way it's set out. It's very professionally set out. And it's very effective the way it's set out with Anonymous. But you can just do it yourself with a laptop. So what they are is they, they stand... Who knows what Anonymous for the Voiceless is? Okay, so about half of you. For those who don't know, they stand on the streets where they have masks on. They uh, hold uh, screens and they show current Australian slaughterhouse footage and footage from farms in Australia. Some of it RSPCA approved. And they have outreaches. So people who are on outreach will educate the public as to what they're seeing on the screens. Massive. It's probably one of the most rewarding types of activism you'll do because you can see the change happening right there in front of you. So it, it also gives you a lot of skills in communication. And one thing I've found most effective is building rapport with people. The way you build rapport is you analyse the person you're talking to and you speak to them on their level. You might copy some of their body language. You might be talking to a bunch of 15-year-old boys. They're like kids. They're, they're cool, you know what I mean? So you don't go up to them and talk like a professor to them or like a teacher to them or talk down to them. No, you get down on their level when you talk with them. Hey bro, what do you think of that mate? It's pretty messed up, hey? Like do you have a dog? Do you think that's cool? Man, I don't think that's cool, hey bro? You know what I mean? That's how I talk to, if you're talking to an older lady, maybe she's a little bit more professional, then you act accordingly. You speak her language. That's how you build rapport with people. That's how you advocate. You adapt. You gotta understand the person you're talking to as well. You gotta understand what makes them tick okay you don't go off and have a logical discussion with someone who's having an emotional response 
If they're having an emotional response, then keep it in the emotion uh, conversation with them. Okay, keep it in the heart. You know, oh yeah, it's terrible what's happening to these animals, isn't it? Like, I'm a compassionate person. I can see you're a compassionate person. That's why I, I chose to stop doing this. Keep it in emotion with them. Don't take it back up into their brain, into the logic. But then you have these people who are like, they, they're all logic. They're all logic robots. And that's fine. You can have a logical debate with someone. You can debate veganism on logic alone because it's, it's a logical position to hold. It's a consistent position to hold. And a logical person will see the inconsistencies in being in eating animals. They, they will see it if they're being intellectually honest. So understand who you're talking to and you know if it's environment if it's the plight of the environment then go there go there with them don't start talking about you know i get lost in ethics i do because i think that's the most important foundation to vegan it is what veganism is it's ethics it's about animals but if they're about the environment i always try to bring it back to ethics because that's what keeps people vegan but you know go into the environment with them and that's why being educated is important too you always have to have info on you my cards have just run out but get some cards made up. If you want to go onto my Instagram, you can see my designs. Keep them short. A few about ethics, a, a few about the environment, a few links about health, okay? And turn it around. I always use Challenge 22 on the back of these cards. Have them on you. Even when you're at the supermarket, when you're talking to people, there's nothing like whipping out a card and say, hey, follow those links. And if you, if you like what you see, if it speaks to you, turn around, you can do Challenge 22 on the back. Who knows what Challenge 22 is? Yeah? Okay, so three or four people. Challenge 22 is a resource. It started in is Israel by um, Anonymous for Animal Rights. They're about a 25-year-old animal rights group over there. They started Challenge 22. Now, it's a 22-day vegan challenge. Now, I'm quite aware that veganism is not a challenge. I know it's a lifestyle, an ethical-based lifestyle, but it takes 21 days to rebuild a new habit. Okay? Now, they sign up to this website they have a bunch of mentors who will look after them every step of the way at the start. Some of the hardest things at the start are what do I eat? What about my protein? They have registered dietitians that will help them every step of the way. It's an amazing resource. So I have all these people saying, hey Joey, I watched your video, I wanna go vegan. I can't physically coach every single person, but I send them to Challenge 22. It saves you so much, it's an amazing resource and I recommend every single activist or even vegan who wants to advocate in their own, in, in their own like, lifestyle, in their own environment to use it. To use it because it, it takes a lot of the burden off them. They don't have to commit to a lifetime of veganism. They just have to try it for 22 days. You know, it's just like give it a go. You, what, what do you got to lose? 22 days out of your life. And what people find is it's easy. They educate themselves along the way. When they stop eating animal products, they're more likely to empathise with animals. You know, these things happen when they're when they're trying out the lifestyle. It's a, and there's a community on there that stick together, and they're all trying it together. It's amazing. So I recommend you all do it. Now the power of showing slaughterhouse footage, you might think it's a little bit extreme st standing out on the streets with slaughterhouse footage, but some people need that. A lot of people need that because they have this picture in their mind of what they think happens in a slaughterhouse. They have no idea. They have this picture of humane slaughter. A bolt gun in the head of a cow that's willing. Pigs push into a gas chamber willingly. It's like, yeah, no, it's cool. They fall asleep happily. You know, and they all, all of a sudden they go through like some magical machine and they end up in a package. They don't know what goes on with animals, and it's an important part of it, but they need to see it. And it's up to the outreachers to tell them. There is, an, there is a minor discrepancy with showing slaughterhouse footage because people might think, hey, that doesn't happen here. You always use local footage in Australia, current. Okay, there's another problem. People think, oh, there's a humane way to do it. These are just isolated incidents. Well, there's thousands of hours of the footage, so it's not isolated incidents. They could, you could ask them, hey, go and find me the most humane slaughter footage you can find, and we'll talk about it, okay? Go and find it for me. Go, go search the internet, come back to me. And once they go searching, they'll realize. <laughs> but it's up to you as an outreacher to say, hey, is there a humane way to kill an animal who doesn't want to die? To kill anyone who doesn't want to die? To kill your dog if they don't want to die? So it's up to you to take it away from treatment, which they're seeing on the, on the screen, and bring it to um, animal use. Because it's the using the animals that's the problem, not the treatment. Okay, using is what's got to stop. If you want to join your local anonymous, I, I recommend you go out and have a just go out for like one or two, and you don't have to be on outreach straight away. You can just go hold a sign, or you can just go and do something called shadowing, which is standing a couple of meters away from an outreacher and listening to how things go. You know, you might really enjoy it. It's a great community to get behind. Uh, you feel understood, which is good as a vegan. You know, sometimes you feel like you know you're living in. Uh, well, where no one understands you, which can be hard. 
So it's amazing for your mental health too, and it's very, very, very rewarding. I'll give you that, 100%. Another method I use is called Socratic method. Who knows who Socrates is? Okay, so he's a Greek philosopher who teach people by asking questions. All right, I didn't know who Socrates was until like a year into doing it, but it was just something that come really naturally to me, asking questions. The way you do this is you ask a leading question. Hey, uh, let's just say, um, are you an animal lover? Yeah, of course, I love animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, no worries, you got a dog? Yeah, you love your dog? Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, now, do you eat animals? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, do you, think, do you still think you could be an animal lover while you're eating them? You know, those sort of, it's the Socratic method. And if they, if they come back like, yeah, but, you know, I need, I need protein, I need iron. And you could say, well, you don't think you could get protein and iron from plants? It's a question. And they say, yeah, but it's not... It's not the same, like, I, I'm a bodybuilder. I, there are, do you think body, vegan bodybuilders exist? You know, you always answer their, uh, when, they, when they come back with their response with a question. Okay, it gets them to engage in the conversation a lot easier. Like, if you're just sitting there pumping facts down their throat, you've got them in the corner and they're just like, you know, like, have you ever talked to someone who knows heaps about something? And they're just like, boom, 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 and you're just like, oh my God, like, I'm not even listening to them. It's too full, much for me. And I'm just waiting for this conversation to end. That's, that can happen. And I can do it to people too. But if you ask them a question, they're more likely to engage. And they think about the question. They have a logical, you know, mechanism in their brain. And they go, here's a response. And then they can see the inconsistencies in their response. And they're almost like they're having this, you know, this crisis. You know, because they're holding two beliefs that are opposing. It's called cognitive dissonance. Okay? And you can question them through that really calmly and it's the least intrusive way of advocating because you're just asking them a question like you don't know the answer to it okay and you should always look like you're curious you know is there a humane way to kill an animal that doesn't want to die though you know like you want them to answer you don't know and, and it's sort of it's even better if, if they don't even know that you're vegan i've tried that that's really cool the, the, their their answers are a lot different their guards down a bit more. People ask me, Joey, how do you stay calm when someone says something hurtful? I mean, I get in a lot of debates and I remain calm, reasonably calm. Some people can say I'm, I'm a touch aggressive, but you know, no matter how you advocate, people are gonna say you're aggressive. But I do remain calm. And the way you do that is by feeling the emotion that comes when someone says something hurtful. Well, let's just say you've been, you know, scouring through slaughterhouse footage. I just come back from Bali. I, I was in a halal slaughterhouse bearing witness to the animals as they were being slaughtered. Okay, now if I go out in the streets and someone says something insensitive or um, someone says, hey, like, halal's humane, and I'm like, it flashes through my mind like I just witnessed these animals suffering for 10 minutes after they had their throats slashed open, and I, like, I reacted with my immediate emotion. They don't know what I've seen. They, don't, they, they have no idea. So you have to let that, that emotion pass, okay? And you always respond. You don't react. So that is my tip. Respond. Don't react a knee-jerk reaction. That will get you into trouble. That will get you into a, an argument. And I do get into, uh, like, I, I'm not perfect, but I'm working on it. And that's what we all need to do. Like, it's, it's a bit hard, you know, emotion's there. But you need to be conscious of it and aware. So respond, don't react. Another important form of activism is, this is probably one of the most powerful I've been involved with, with and it's the SAVE movement. Who knows what the SAVE movement is? Okay, so the SAVE movement is, no one knows, basically. There's only a couple here that know what the SAVE movement is. It's, it's where you go outside a slaughterhouse, okay, and you stop the trucks before the animals go in, okay, and you bear witness to the animals inside those trucks, okay? It is probably one of the most important forms of activism I've done, bearing witness, okay? You connect with the animals on a certain level, okay? It's different to even watching um, these vigil videos where people are filming animals in, in trucks. It's completely different. You're there with them. You can see the innocence in the individual animal's eyes, okay? You can see the animals that are arriving dead to the slaughterhouse. You can feel their pain. You can see their broken legs, broken wings. You can smell the fear. It's, it's, it's an important part because you, it becomes a reality to you. It's like, wow, even as an activist, you know, I was doing activism for a couple of years, and until I met these animals, not the ones in the sanctuary, the ones that were suffering their whole life, it gave me a different perspective. It was, ma it was huge. And then, then, then go out and talk about veganism. Then go out and speak for animals after that. 
you, you can hear the conviction in your voice. You can feel it in your heart. They can see that emotion in your eyes. You know, it becomes real. And that comes across when you're advocating. You know, I couldn't speak with this much conviction if I didn't understand it to the level I do now. Before, I knew. Yeah, I seen it, I knew. I heard about it, I knew. But now I did it and I understand. I've been through it with them. I understand now what they're going through. Completely different. And for uh, vegans as well, when, you, when you're there, it's, it builds such solidarity with each other. You're like, hey, this is the monstrosity, this horrific thing that is, is going on right here. We're here for you. We're here for the animals. We're here for each other. Okay, and it's important to express the normal human emotions that you need to when you're there. If it makes you feel sad, feel sad. Cry. Of course, it's a sad experience. I cry. I cried when I walked out of a dairy farm. I couldn't save a body, a bobby calf. You know, it's a sad experience. We shouldn't be afraid to express emotions. Never suppress those emotions and comfort each other. Give each other a hug if you have to. You know, we're all in this together. And I just think, like, this would probably be, be, be the only form of human compassion these animals have ever seen in their whole life. This is sometimes the only sunlight these, some of these chickens have seen in their entire life. And it's on the way to the slaughterhouse. And all they've got to look forward to after a life of suffering is that knife across their throat or the gas chamber. So another thing I'll talk about, this, this actual talk is called Fearless Activism. Now, I'm very aware that activism always has some element of fear. I, I still get it, I still get nervous, but there's a way to get through that fear. Mainly it's perspective. Um, I'll tell you a story that happened when I first started um, doing street activism. I was going out to do street in interviews one day and I was by myself, I used to do a lot of them by myself, I had my little phone, I had my little microphone, I was going out and I, I ripped down some pretty hard hitting questions about the dairy industry. And I was driving into the city, it was night time, I was, I, I was at Hindley Street and I could see the people there and I was like, oh I don't really want to do this, hey. I'd just been, you know, I just left gangs, I just learned to socialise without alcohol, so I had this anxiety that I had, I had social anxiety, I didn't really want to be there and I was going to turn back. And I was like, I should just go. You're like, I don't feel right about this. And then I thought about it. I was like, wait a second, what am I doing this for? Am I doing this for me? And then I realised something. I was like, oh no, I'm doing it for those slaves in the dairy industry that are getting their children taken away from them, getting murdered after a life of slavery. And I was like, perspective. So I went out and I did it anyway. Also, another thing that helps you get over the fear is being educated. So this is a, this is a major backbone to your, your activism, being educated. It's... If, you're not, if you don't know the answer to something someone says to you, you're more likely to get frustrated and angry with them. Like if they ask you some, oh, you know, there's animals killed in crop deaths, so uh, you're killing animals too. If you don't know how to respond to that, you know, it can make you frustrated, angry. You feel like, oh. So being educated and knowing how to respond is very, very important. You, you also can remain anonymous as an activist. You don't have to be a public activists like me or like other people that you can remain anonymous there's ways to do that um, you can have an anonymous Facebook page where you just post things you know like there, there you can be an anonymous activist if the fear or you or the anxi social anxiety is too much but I would say it's okay to have some nerves okay now the thing about courage is you're not born with courage most people aren't born with courage okay it's something you build on and you work on it comes from gradually stepping outside of your comfort zone and speaking out. Now, your comfort zone might be you don't want to leave the house, you've never talked to anyone, and you might take one step out of your house. That's you've got outside your comfort zone. The next day, you can go further. My comfort zone might be like what I'm doing now. If you've watched my videos, stopping trucks, having debates with farmers, you know, out there doing marches, talking in front of 5,000 people. I could always step outside of that comfort zone, but whatever your comfort zone is, we have to slowly step outside of it. Courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And trust me, when you do it, you'll be so happy you did. It's so liberating. It's so empowering. You surprise yourself when you're out there, trust me, you really do. And dealing with criticism, criticism is something that's always going to come up in your life, no matter what you're doing. Especially when you're kicking goals for animals, doing activism, doing the right thing. You know, you're going to get criticised. You're going to get criticised by non-vegans. You're going to get criticised by vegans. And you're going to get criticised by other activists. You can't avoid it. I'll tell you why you can't avoid it. When I was in gangs and on drugs all the time and hurting people around me, I was getting criticised. Right? When I got sober, left the gangs and, and started speaking up for animals, I still got criticised. Okay? Now I'm doing activism. I'm, I'm, I'm making a massive impact. People are going vegan and changing their lives. I've still got criticism. You can't avoid it. 
Okay, so you might as well follow your heart. Okay? People are always going to criticize you no matter what you do. You want to be a victim to public opinion? You don't want to dictate your life over what other people think of you? Is that how you're going to live your, your life? Your the girlfriend that you have? You know, the people you hang out with? Everything? Your job? Dictated by other people? No. Do what you think is right in your heart and follow it with conviction. Follow it with courage. Okay? And the universe will move out the way for you when you do that. This is, make, can make some vegans feel a little bit uncomfortable, but why I feel it's an obligation to be active in some way. Okay? And it's more about being proactive, like I spoke about, the different ways you can do it, whatever resonates with you. And I'll tell you why. Veganism is just non-participation. Okay? It's, it's a neutral position. You've been causing direct harm, you've realised it, and you've decided to stop, so you don't participate in it. Okay? Vegan activism is where you intervene. So you see someone causing this injustice, okay? The only way that stops is not by you standing by and watching and going, I won't participate in that, but by you intervening and speaking out, and that's what vegan activism is. Okay? If you're in the animal's position, this is what I ask myself, eh? If you're in the animal's position, would you want someone to speak out for you? Okay? You can't articulate your suffering, your pain, confined to a cage used, used for your body. The only thing you have look, to look forward to is a slaughterhouse. You can't scream out for help. No one listens to your screams anyway. Cows bellowing out for days for their bobby calves. Do you think anyone's listening? You know what I mean? If that was you, would you want someone to speak out for you? Animals would save themselves if they could. But they can't. They're vulnerable. They're defenceless. They are defenceless and they trust us. If vegans don't speak up, no one else is going to. Okay, so this is up to us. We know. When you know, you have an obligation to act. You have a duty as vegans. We know the injustice. The people that are out there, they're, they're, they're eating these animals, they don't know what's going on. They're, they're just conditioned by society. They haven't woken up yet. We have the privilege now. We've woken up. And what are we going to do with it? Another thing I see that's a real big issue is as a vegan activist, or even as a vegan, you think it's your job to turn everyone vegan in the first conversation you have with them. Okay? It's not our job to turn everyone vegan. It's our job to plant seeds. Okay? Now, I see vegan activists like, oh my God, talking to my mum and she just oh, showed her everything and she still won't change. That's, that is not our job. That's not your responsibility. Okay, you can give someone the most golden information about veganism. Every single aspect. You know, saturated fat, cholesterol is causing heart disease, the number one killer, it could kill you, mum. Oh, um, you know, the plight of the environment, 91% of Amazon deforestation is because of animal agriculture. Oh, and look what they're doing to animals. You've got to watch Earthlings, see what they're doing to the pigs in the gas chambers just here in Murray Bridge. Mum, it's terrible. Boom, and she still doesn't go vegan. You've tried your best, all right? I'll tell you another thing, there's something called the 100 point system. My friend Omri from Israel was an amazing activist, He's, he heads an organisation called Free, Vegan Friendly, he organised the biggest march in Israel. The 100 point system is like, someone might meet you in a conversation and you might tell them something about the dairy industry, that's 15 points, boom, they're like, wow, 15 points, okay, so they move along. And they might be scrolling through their Facebook and they see a video, whoa, whoa, whoa. the egg industry, oh, that might be another 30 points, so you got them up to 45 points. They might watch Gary Yarovsky's speech, that's another 40 points. They might meet you, there's another five points to go. Alright? And I'm like, have you been thinking about this? Oh yeah, I've been thinking about this. And boom, they go vegan. Alright? They've got their 100 points. So you could just be that 15 points to tip them over. Or you might be that 15 points to, to get them started. But all you have to do is your very best in the moment. Alright? And don't be too hard on yourself if this person isn't going to change right there and then. People will change when they're ready. Alright? And you could be spending that energy on someone who's ready to hear the message. And that's how you be a sustainable activist. Okay, so losing hope. As a vegan activist, we've been doing, or even as being a vegan for a while and knowing the truth, um, it's very bittersweet. Um, sweet because you have the power, you're empowered with this knowledge so you can do something about it, but it's very bitter because sometimes the magnitude of the injustice and the cruelty can become a burden on your shoulders that is hard to bear for, for a lot of people. And this is a major issue, and people can lose hope. They've been trying and trying so long, and they don't see any results, and they're focusing on the animal suffering, and it's detrimental to them. They're burning out. What helps me with this is focus on the exponential growth of the movement. Even in the last two years when I've been most predominantly active, the movement has grown so exponentially 
Now, there used to be one Gary Yorofsky, now there's 10,000, okay? The movement is growing out fast. There's vegan options popping up everywhere. There's vegan restaurants popping up everywhere. We're voting with our dollar. The dairy industry is going down. I just got back from the UK, London. Earthling Ed organised a massive march over there. It was about five or 6,000 of us walking through, marching through London, screaming for animal liberation. People looking out the building windows. They shut down the streets, okay? Now, people are going to have to start listening. This wasn't happening a couple of years ago. This is happening worldwide now. From London, I went to Israel. Okay, Israel is one of the most vegan countries on earth. Okay, they've got about 400,000 vegans there, about 8, uh, 8 million people. So it's, it's huge over there. Okay, now 30,000 people marching for animal liberation through the streets. You should see what that looks like from the sky. If anyone's seen, did anyone see what that looked like from the sky? It was huge, it was massive. Okay, now they're going to start listening to us. What's going to happen next year? This is in two years. I've just seen it go boom, 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 boom. It's crazy. And when the snowball effect happens, it happens really slow, slow. And then when it builds up momentum, and all of a sudden it explodes. And this is happening because of activists. Okay? This isn't happening because we led by example and sat there and ate a burger. That is very important too. But it's happening because people are talking about this. They're speaking up about it. They're at their shops, at, the, at their workplace. They're talking, speaking out about it. No, I don't eat dairy for this reason. Not because I'm allergic, but for this reason. This is why I don't eat dairy. You know, we're speaking up about it. This is why the movement is growing so fast. So don't lose hope. Never lose hope. Because you've got to focus on what's happening. Okay? And another thing is that we're all in this together. I think um, support is a major part of this. Recently, when I was in Bali and I, um, I bared witness inside of the slaughterhouse, a lot of people were seeing something that I didn't really see. They were like, Joey, you know, you could suffer some post-traumatic stress disorder from this. I mean, when I was in the slaughterhouse and I could... You know, I was experiencing what was happening in there and I could smell the cold-blooded murder in there. Like if you've been in a slaughterhouse, it doesn't smell like death. It smells like murder, like struggle. Really horrible place. While I was in there, yeah, I experienced some trauma. But when I left, I felt like I'd worked through that trauma. It was very... I felt okay. But people were commenting, Joey, are you okay? Heaps of vegans supporting me, inboxing me. Joey, you want to talk about what you're seeing? You know, that there is so powerful to have people by your side supporting you through this that's why we need to be there for each other you don't know what some another activist is going through there, there could be a different personality to me i've got a little bit more of a thick skin i can handle a lot more than some people some people are really emotional and that it can be that can be it can be a very detrimental to them to focus on this sort of stuff and we need to be there for each other and say hey are you okay don't worry give us a hug i know exactly what you're going through and that there is like what's going to make this movement a more solid unity and we need to be a, we need to be unified as a movement, because you know, separate we're we're a weaker force, but together we can do anything. So, I like to finish with this quote, and this is what we should all, you know, sort of reiterate to ourselves: the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who stand by and watch. Okay, so remember that. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure how much time I've got left. We might have time for some questions. There's no obligation to get directly involved. You can just stand by, have a sign, walk up in the truck, stop, bring your phone out, take some photos of the animals. That's the main point of this. The main point of saves is you might think 20 people outside of a slaughterhouse isn't going to do nothing, but those 20 people have phones in their hands. And when you share these pictures of these animals, how many Facebook friends you got? Everyone's got about 500. How are you going to get 10,000 people out to a slaughterhouse? You're not. You're not. But you can when you put your phones on the faces of these animals and show people what their food looks like before it's processed. Okay? And that's how we make change. That's why SAVE movement is so powerful. I would probably focus on one. So the more you focus on one, uh, whether it's... F they're all amazing. In, diff in different ways. Instagram, um, I found, I've personally found more for girls. It's, it's a very, it's, I'd say that that's very, like I've seen some girls, they've got millions and millions and millions of followers on there. It's amazing what they can do. And they're very clever and strategic about how they, they spread the message on there. So it's like, hey, look at my food. Hey, I, look at my lifestyle. Hey, this is a pretty photo. And boom, here's some information about veganism slipped in there after 10 posts. Now that, that there, you can, bring in a lot of followers showing your lifestyle and you don't push hell people away by vegan, 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 vegan. Now, it's a strategy. 
and it's very powerful. Look at Bonnie Rebecca, she's got hella followers. Heaps, heaps of followers. Now, I don't know if she would if she was like Joey Carmstrong, oh, 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 gas chambers, this and that at the front store. I don't know if she'd have the same following, you know. So you have to use strategy, but Facebook's amazing. The videos are more likely to go viral on there, they get shared more often. And if you focus on one, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, not really Snapchat, personally. It's harder to build a following on there, you know. Instagram does the same thing now, you know, but yeah, focus on one and, and focus all your effort on it. They go into Slaughterhouse to be killed. It's called the save movement, but we, did, we don't save any animals, okay? It's a vigil where we're bearing witness, okay? The animals that get saved are the ones that the people stop eating when they see our work, okay? When we, they see the videos that we make. Okay, that's, they're the animals that get saved when people go vegan. That's the best way we can help animals is by converting people to a vegan lifestyle and slowly phasing this. You know, liberating animals is amazing. Yeah, that, that, in that individual animals, oh, you've just saved their entire existence. Huge. The best way we can help is by abolishing the industry. And the way we do that is by, um, with our dollar, supply and demand. And yeah, it's a shame. It's a hard part watching them go in. But it's part of it, you know? It's, it's all part of it. That's why it's so powerful. Because you have to come to terms with that, that you can't save them all. Not my, yeah, exactly. Friends and family are the hardest. Um, my mum has, my brother has, and uh, that's about it. So I know how hard friends and family can be. It's just such a tricky uh, topic, and there's no blanket answer for everyone. It's, you have to be so much more tactful when it comes to friends and family. You know, you have to be so much more strategic, a lot more gentle, tiptoeing around it, you know, and, you know, they're, le they're less likely to listen to you if they're your family. It's, it's, unless your name's James Aspie where he just sat his whole family down and they all went vegan at once or Case over here and he's just like, Mum, Dad, everyone, you're all going vegan. And they're like, okay, 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 what's a vegan? Don't matter about that, you're all going vegan. Like... Just some fantasy that never happens. And like, most people have the same problem. It took a long while for people to start respecting what I, like the message I had in my friends and family circle. Now people understand, hey, well, he's serious about this. There's something to it. It's, he's just not eating carrots and lettuce to be healthy, ride his bike around. Wait, he's, it's an issue of justice now. And the longer you're vegan, the more people will start to respect it. And you have to be very strategic with family. It's the hardest question I get asked. Well, you know what? That is one of my main uh, targets, my main demographics, because I think a lot. It, it's not the guy's fault. They have been targeted by, targeted by advertisement and programming conditioning to say, "Hey, eating steak is manly." Okay, like uh, Farmer Junior Ice Coffee, mate. Yeah, drinking baby's milk is manly. That, that's literally baby's baby calf's milk. Okay, they're targeted by advertisement. Their parents, their father, ate steak. Hey, mate, that's rabbit food. You got to eat your steak. But I'll tell you this. There's nothing manly about contributing to the suffering and slavery of innocent animals. We live in a society that defends children fiercely, okay? And these animals are as innocent and defenseless as children, okay? Like if it was someone's dog getting kicked on the side of the road and you went and stood up for that dog, it's a noble thing, it's a noble act, it's, it's a very masculine thing to do, okay? But why is it different for a pig, a cow or a chicken? I was in um, a juvenile uh, prison you know, talking to pretty hardened, um, you know, prisoners, 15 to 18 year olds. And the way I explained veganism to them is, was, has anyone here got a dog? And I said, if anyone hurt that dog, what would you do? You'd probably belt them one, wouldn't you? And they were like, yeah, of course. And I said, well, this is all veganism is, except it's not a dog, it's a pig. And they're getting pushed into a gas chamber and stabbed in the throat for a bacon sandwich. And I don't think that's right, eh? And they were like, well, I respect that, mate, eh? I respect that. So that's, that is a different view on, on uh, veganism. Defend animals is one of the slogans I promote. I think that is a very masculine way of, of it changes people's perspective on veganism. It's like, hey, we're here defending animals, you know? And I think um, a lot of it comes down to they care about what their mates think as well. You care about what your mates think, right? And is that very manly to care about what other people think about your mate? Like you're too afraid to go on your own course because you're afraid that your mates are going to go, oh, vegan man, that's girly. There's nothing girly about it, mate. It's a noble thing. 
okay? And if you're still living in your friend's shadow or living in the shadow of society, that doesn't take courage to do that. It doesn't take courage to do that, to follow the crowd. To stand up, mate. Stand up for something that's right. Stand up for what you believe in. So that's what I think anyway. That's what makes a man or a woman or just a strong human being. Oh, what I would do if they just don't care, that is the, probably the biggest enemy to this movement progressing is apathy. Where people just don't even care. They don't. If they are fully fighting you about it, they're getting closer. Okay, if they're making fun of you about it, they're, they're, they're on the right way. Because there's three stages of truth. Ridicule, violent opposition, and acceptance. Okay? If they get angry, they've jumped to stage two already. They're close. But if they don't care at all, they're not even interested. And I would say, drop them some, you know, maybe do a little bit of Socratic questioning with them. Maybe try hell, try environment, try showing earthlings to them. Drop them a card, move on to the next person. There's no point even going there. You'll find someone who's ready or who's at least at one of the three stages, you know. So yeah, that's how I deal with that. Come across people like that all the time, they're not really interested. You know, you just drop a few powerful seeds at them and then you just move on.